Welcome golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2022 Sanderson Farms picks and bet shows. First off and foremost, thank you for stopping by. And again, congratulations. If you hang in here, you are going to have a little bit of an edge on the competition because, well, what I do is a little different than what the other guys do. So give me about 20, 30 minutes. I am going to go through my uh, favorite picks, go through the analysis that it I came to those picks with. I'm going to give you my favorite uh, few bets at the end. And uh, with that said, let's do this. Okay, so again, uh, just always going to keep mentioning prizepicks.com. If you've not checked it out, go check it out now. Right now, they have a promotion where they are offering you a 100% match on your first deposit up to a max of $100. And all you need to do is enter in my golf guru. That is golf guru promo code when you uh, sign in. And... I actually gave out some picks for the Monday Night Football game last night, and it did not go as I was hoping. Uh, it was kind of a one-sided show, and uh, if you took uh, Zeke Elliott on the over for rushing, you definitely did well. Um, but yeah, all my guys pretty much underwhelmed. Um, a lot of that was due to what the script, how quick uh, Philadelphia got behind. Of course, Miles Sanders hit the over, but everybody else, uh, you know, Devontae was covered by from uh, with digs and just couldn't get away, dropped quite a few, missed a few passes. Um, Tony Pollard actually had a lot of ut utilization. Just he was running it. They weren't passing it to him, which is a little different from what we see with Tony. And then Amari Cooper uh, still getting over that. I guess he's, you know, got that rib injury. Um, just was not as target as much. And here was uh, CD lamb. It was all tight ends uh, with Schultz and uh, Zeke and Pollard. So, Anyways, missed on that one, but I will put out uh, for tomorrow my PGA prize picks. Uh, definitely better on those. Uh, decent on the football, but I really feel like we have the advantage uh, if I get to take a look at what projections they have and give you the over-unders on the guys that we're going to like, uh, at least for Thursday. It's a one-day kind of thing. Okay, so go check it out. Again, don't forget to use my promo code and get your 100% match. All right, real quickly, uh, if you missed the preview show, as always, I break down the skill stroke gain analysis rankings that we want to look at for this track and from prior experience. And uh, at Sanderson Farms at CC of Jackson, uh, it had just shown over and over that you need ball strikers. We like guys with distance off the tee. You don't have to hit the fairways as much, uh, but it is in there. My big model, uh, of course, approach is always important to get those pretty or better opportunities, putting, scrambling, you know, the procs to the pins that show up is right there. Uh, so with all that said, Kind of already did that, did a larger model, but for what we're going to do today, I've sh sh shrunk that model down, as I always have. And so we'll, when I jump over to Fantasy National, we'll get into that. And then I also did the comparable courses uh, yesterday, but I'm going to go over them again just so you know when I'm kind of flushing out these guys. Uh, we're going to plug these in and just see how they rank. I think Valero is the number one comparable course, uh, followed by the Houston Open. I actually like the Rocket Mortgage probably more than the Fortinet, which is, of course, with the Safeway. Uh, where we just saw a Silverado, but it's still a good comp course. Valspar is also uh, something that I added. Uh, of course, Innisbrook, Copperhead, tough track, but it is a par 71, uh, pretty close to seven, well, 7,350 yards. Um, it is Bermuda, you know, a little more water, but I think uh, we can look at, I mean, there's some crossover that I think definitely applies there. You got the TPC Twin Cities at 3M Open, of course, Bay Hill for the R&O Palmer. All those, you know, some are Bermuda, but all have very similar similar uh, similar characteristics to uh, what is going to be going on at CC at Jackson. Okay, with that said, let's go jump over into the analysis. Okay, so jumping over into Fantasy National, again, highly recommend it. If you are doing your own analysis for golf, it is specifically built for golf. Um, check it out. And, uh, you know, I think you can, do, uh, you can do a weekly membership, you can do a monthly. So if you want to just test it out, give it a shot. All right, so what I've done here, of course, this is all about DraftKings pricing. Of course, you can use these picks for FanDuel, Yahoo, whatever else, but the pricing is going to be different. And what I am focusing on is the last 12 rounds. I always like to keep recent form because things change very quickly in golf from round to round, uh, you know, from week to week. It's amazing how guys, I mean, you know, example is Morikawa during the whole FedEx, uh, did not look anything like Colin Morikawa goes out in the Ryder Cup and looks like Colin Morikawa. So it's always changing. So I'm always going to keep uh, the most recent data that we have. That's why I'm looking at the last 12 rounds. And um, the small mini model uh, that we're going to be looking at is, number one, as I mentioned, 
ball striking. Uh, all the guys that I'm picking are going to be pretty much top 50 or better. I wanted to go with off the tee. So to just driving distance, of course, that combines, you know, driving distance and hitting fairways. Uh, I think approach is always important. Par five, we got four par fives. Uh, if I remember right, three of these are very gettable. One is uh, a pretty good eagle opportunity. I believe it's like hole number five. And then uh, we got to find out the guys that are getting the birdie or better because we're looking at an 18 to under to a 22 under. Somewhere in that range is where, you know, if the weather stays what it looks like it's going to be, um, you know, good. They should be able to score on this course, had in the past. And then over to the right, uh, you're looking at the last 12 rounds, how many birdies have they been averaging per round. And then here you got recent results, so how they've done over the last five tournaments. And then tournament history, of course, how they've done at Sanderson Farms. Okay, so with that said, you understand. Oh, and over here, no filters are turned on because once you do that, it starts to pull in older data. And again, I want to keep the freshest data sample we have uh, for all this analysis. Okay, I'm not going to go in depth on each of these guys, but I am going to allow to see you. Uh, you can see where they did rank. Um, of course, Sam Burns, I think it's a great fit. Sam Burns, you can see from an approach side, um, has kind of faltered a little bit recently, but a guy that is a good ball striker, an amazing putter actually on Bermuda, um, I think is very viable. But I'm, as usual, I'm going to go ahead uh, from this perspective and fade Sam Burns. Now, again, um, there's real no reason why you wouldn't start a team with him, uh, but he's not going to be my number like, if I'm picking at that kind of range, he's not my, my guy that I'm going with. Um, but, you know, with that said, he is someone that if I put in, you know, 50 lineups, Sam Burns is definitely going to be involved in that. But I just wanted to state that off the bat. Okay, moving on. So my number one guy out of the top, and this is not how my ranking is. So this is by salary. Okay. Um, I can also, yeah, we'll just keep by salary. Uh, is how this will come up. So the second most expensive guy, and I just want to confirm. Yeah, okay. Would be uh, Will Z. And so out of my, you know, top guys, I'm actually going to go with Will Z. It's not because he ranks fourth my model. Um, that's, of course, part of it. But um, everything here is solid green over his last three tournaments. You can see, you know, the T8, the T29, uh, he had 11th. I've already said that what holds uh, Will Z back is the putter. And uh, as far as I know, he did... Funny enough, he did play uh, in this tournament last year. He actually missed the cut, uh, but not worried about that. We've seen multiple guys that have missed the cut before, and they actually come out and win the thing, uh, or just had terrible form at that course over multiple years, and then come out in top five, top ten. So um, I am definitely uh, I'm on some Will Z because, I again, my narrative for this is it's all about the best ball strikers, and they typically these fast greens that are very simple, um it you know are gonna make it a little easier to putt uh you just gotta get on the line not worry as much about speed because you're just gonna have to tap the damn thing and it's gonna just fly so um that is the theory on that that i'm going with and that's what's shown up multiple times here before hence garcia went in champ went in uh even muñoz went in none of those guys are what you would call good putters by any stretch all right so we click on will z let's go look at some of the information so you know over his short career he has gained on poa against the field but bermuda uh, would be his you know second we'll say surface uh, over that projection and bent would be his worst um not concerned about any of this stuff i mean you know the wind and all that i just i don't see anything coming into factor there what we will go click on is position where has he done his best uh of course he had that masters a second place again crazy fast uh bent greens uh that he just you know put it amazing on so you could kind of go with that again that uh, if you want to go with my narrative of, you know, what, even think about who won that tournament was Hideki Matsuyama, not a good putter, um, good everything else, awesome ball striker. If he was in this field, I'd be all over Matsuyama. Um, but, uh, you know, again, my theory kind of shows again that something about super fast greens is that you just got to figure out the line. And a lot of these guys can figure out the line. It's just the speed uh, is where they kind of falter. Anyways. Let's go look at uh, some comparable courses. Um, click on date. All right. So I think he has not played in quite a bit of the ones that I'm going to look at. So I'm going to go through these. But I think he did play at the Fortinet, um, again, which was uh, the Safeway. But uh, he played this year. Of course, that was very recent. A couple weeks ago, had an 11th. So that's good. Again, the putter is what held him back. It was nothing to do with the ball striking. That was all... 
clicking. Um, he's never played at the Valspar. What about the 3M? He's never played at the 3M. I pretty much every... So he did play at the Arnold Palmer this uh, past uh, March time frame. He had a 10th. I think that's a good comparable. Again, you can see the putter. You know, if it would have clicked, uh, he would have turned that 10th maybe into a win if he just would have been, you know, gained a half stroke or a stroke on the field. Um, so that's what we're looking for him. And then... I think he has played the Rocket, yeah. So not the greatest show in this past July, which uh, I think that probably got a lot of people. I think that was even Webb Simpson missed the cut there. There were some of the big guys that just did not perform uh, well on in a simple, and I, I think is a simple track um, against a simple field. Um, but it is what it is. You know, guys have off weeks. And you can see, for whatever reason, his ball striking was horrendous, and the putter, as usual, was not good. So if he does what he does and what he's been showing over his last three events, um, you know, he's been all green on the ball striking around the green, which again, I don't think is super crucial here. And you can see two out of three of these events, he has gained with the putter, just the last one at uh, the Fortinet. He did not. So with all that said, he is my pick, uh, when we're going to be looking at the top, you know, Sergio, of course, past winter, um, you know, the, probably the, the prototype, the leader of the best ball strikers, but not good putters. I would say Sergio would be my number one to fit in that category. Um, you know, I just, my own personal opinion with this is that he's just got to be spent from the rider. I'm actually shocked. You know, I said the same thing about Rom when he played in the Fortinet before. I told you guys, don't play Rom uh, because I had a feeling that his mind was not going to be there. Um, you know, supposedly there was a stomach issue. Um, but it just, yeah, it just all kind of came to fruition. And I kind of feel the same with Garcia. I think we're looking for a letdown, uh, so quickly after the Ryder and how emotional that was. Now he played well at the Ryder cup. Um, you know, you can make up a ton of reasons why, but I'm out on Sergio. Sun JM, like I said, I, I just, out of these guys, the short of it is I like Corey Connors the best out of this whole field. I've already stated that he's my number one pick. Now, again, if Corey doesn't go out and make a few putts, um, you know, is going to happen. But everything that I can see, that's was the first guy I thought of, and I'm sticking with it. So there's nothing wrong uh, with Sergio. I give you my put on that. Sun JM, he's so hit or miss. Um, you can see he's been training a little better. He's had decent results here. Uh, the three times he's played, he had a second and a T28. Um, but, you know, if I had to pick a guy and save a little bit of salary, I'm going to Corey Connors. And uh, you can see recent form, you know, Corey's doing what Corey kind of does, just kind of because his ball striking is so elite, even with the putter is disastrous, he's still going to get you around the top 20 every time. Uh, you can see he had a second here, uh, a T17, but he's also had a miscut, a T65. I mean, again, I'm not too worried. You could say very positive and good and then, you know, not so good. So, but he does play this track and it, and it just suits him. Uh, again, if you're going with the comparable courses that I'm looking at. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the putter, funny enough, Bermuda is his best worst surface. So you can go with that. Um, and again, you know, still doing elite ball striking things. It's the putter that kind of holds him back. His last positive session, funny enough, was at Memorial at Murfield. And, uh, you know, he lost not way big, you know, probably the, the most strokes he's lost on approach in a long time. Uh, you can see again, you know, pretty good solid uh, ball striking. Again, it's just typically the putter. And if I go put in a course, he first tournament uh, that he won uh, was the Valero, which I believe that was a Monday qualifier. Uh, and then he's had a 14th and a 26th. So again, I think it's identical courses, uh, even in somewhat similar, you know, kind of temperatures. Uh, the Houston Open, which that one, I just want to see, that was at Memorial Park, uh, which I think CC of Houston is a better fit. Um, but, you know, it still is what it is. Oops, clicked out of there um let's go back and uh fortinet he said a 13th recent well not recently but in 2019 a miscut in the 30th what about valspar uh i just want to get it so a good showing at innisbrook copperhead 21st a 16th uh what about the 3m has he played the 3m back in 2019 he had a 46 what about the Arnold Palmer? He recently had a third place uh, at the API uh, back there in March. And the Rocket Mortgage miscut in 2019. That's kind of shocking. But again, you can see approach was off, putter. It can happen. 
But again, he's, uh, you know, the guy that I'm going to be leaning on. So, uh, you know, Will Z, Corey Connor is kind of my one-two punch going in. And then, was, you know, Mito, uh, you know, kind of broke him uh, out, uh, was talking about him a ton. Of course, you know, I was on him for even the Rocket Mortgage um, because he was coming off quite a heater out of the Corn Ferry. Of course, he missed the cut at the Rocket and then came out and just simply put a T5, a T6, a third. He did have that missed cut at Wyndham. But since he's been on tour, um, as far as I'm concerned, I think he's been playing amazing. And I've always said he's kind of like uh, – you were getting some really nice prices on them. And I was calling them kind of a cheap, you know, Joaquin Neiman. I think their swing, everything about them is very similar. Uh, Mito might be actually a better putter than Joaquin uh, from everything that we're seeing at this moment. But he does come up number two in my model, number fifth ranked in ball striking again over the last 12 rounds. So just keep that in perspective. Again, we have a small sample size for Mito, um, you know, but I will click on, of course, the Fortinet. We can look at the 3M Open. That's two of the tournaments. Uh, actually, we can just rank them. So there's his three wins that got him off, off the Corn Ferry onto the PGA. And then since then, when he's been on the PGA, um, you know, again, the third. Uh, I had a good showing at Barbasol. That's Keen Trace. Um, 3M Open. He had a, a six. And the John Deere, he had a 34th. He had these, you know, a couple missed cuts here. Um, looks like the ball striking was just off for that. I believe that's it. And then some older stuff, but nothing. So not a whole lot we can reference from comparable courses. We are just going on form and what we know, and you can see projected ownerships already pretty high. Um, you know, so we're going to have to find some differentiation in other places, but again, that would be my top three guys going in, you know, Keegan Bradley, he's again, a perfect fit from a ball striking perspective. And it just gets that hot putter, you know, uh, as I mentioned before, he almost uh, won the Valspar, uh, but Burns pulled it out on him. Siwoo Kim, you know, I, I look at him, he, he's funny enough, he's got an amazing short game. He's a streaky putter, but a great ball striker also kind of fits that mold. And that's interesting right now is projected ownerships that low. Um, I guess that's maybe because of his past history here, but you know, recent form's been good in 11th to 29th, but he's so hard to predict. I mean, Kisiu Kim is the unpredictable, except if he's playing a Pete Dye course. Uh, if he's playing Pete Dye, bet him, play him. But in just a regular, you know, tournament field, but you can see birdies gain. I definitely will play him in showdown. Um, also, you could bet him as a first round leader. Uh, I think that's a good play, but he's not going to be in my core group. Uh, again, if you're playing 50, 100 lineups, definitely sprinkle in some Siwoo. Tringali, you know, just kind of blah. Um, you can see recently the ball striking has not been there, uh, has been gaining top 10 on gaining strokes on par fives. Um, you know, it's played here a bit and has made the cut every time. Best showing was a T 11th, but yeah, just, you know, he's, he's not the first guy I'm thinking of. Of course, Sebastian Munoz, uh, played the worst golf that I've seen in a long time at the Fortinet. I, I think. I think he almost was like dead last or second to dead last. He, he, it just blew my mind because, I, of course, like a moron, I kept trying to plug him into showdown, at least on Friday. I think he shot like eight over on Thursday, which, you know, and I'm going to bet him again as first round leader. The guy just typically comes out and just lights it up on the first round. Typically, as the weekend progresses is where he falters. But you can see he's had some glaring issues over his last 12 rounds. You know, even though, you know, the BMW and the Northern Trust, he, you know, but you got to remember, you know, those are select smaller fields. Um, so, again, I'm not saying don't play him. Of course, his first win was at this course. You know, you could see uh, one in 2020 and, you know, a T23 last year. But that's a big price tag to pay for Sebastian Munoz. And there's a lot of similar guys. I mean, there's a ton of good plays uh, actually on this slate from 7,000 and below that I'm excited to play. Uh, so my value play show going to have a lot of guys that I'm going to recommend. Um, so you can get away with, I really believe stars and stars and scrubs are going to be your DFS kind of lineups. You know, that's how I'm going to do it. I mean, I'm going to be plugging probably these top three, you know, you can mix in burns with this. And then there's a ton of plays uh, that you can feel confident. I think to put out a uh, 7,000 below. And I'll talk more about that tomorrow. Uh, HV three, you know, another good, great ball striker. Uh, you know, not the greatest tournament history. When you played it twice, you missed a cut most recently. But you can see this, and I've always said, when you see a player, T11, T12, T16, that's the guy that could could get a win. Um, you know, and he's still looking for his first win on tour. 
So I have no issues. Um, I actually just prefer Charlie Hoffman. You know, I think Cameron Davis, you know, and that's the hard part too. You know, I know the, for the guys that have been playing this for a long time, when you see guys like Cameron Davis and HV3 and Munoz, uh, even Tringali, who I think has been in better form, Siwoo Kim, man, when you're paying 9000 that's that's tough. And I'd rather go with someone like a Charlie Hoffman, who I just, I feel like has better win equity. Um, you know, you can see he had a sixth place here in the past, 23rd or 35th. Also, you got to remember the Valero he challenged to win that tournament. Um, we'll get into that. But, uh, you know, also good recent form, you know, 44th and ball striking out of this field. You know, he it's and it's going to come down again with the putter with him. I actually feel like he's a decent putter. We'll see what the splits say. Yeah, so on Bermuda, he actually gains over his career. And Poa just loses on bent. Um, let's go type in some of the comparables. So if I put in Valero, you can see his head just, you know, he actually won that. So he's, you know, won that tournament. He's second, third, first. I mean, he likes playing at uh, TPC San Antonio. I'm, I mean, I don't know if all this was played. Let's go look. Let's just see. So, yeah, even back in 2011, it was played at the uh, Oaks course TPC San Antonio. But again, if we uh, look, he's just lit up Valero. Um, and when I say that, if you have I mean, a second, a third, a win, a couple seconds back to back or runner ups. Um, I think I saw Valspar on here. Same thing, you know, uh, recently an 18th, an 18th, an 11th, a 25th. So good showing there. The Houston Open, something about that guy does like Texas, but, you know, 29th, um, you know, this is quite a ways ago, so I'm not really going to reference that. Uh, what about the Fortinet? Uh, recently saw me at 22nd uh, at the old Safeway at Silverado. And let's go look at Arnold Palmer. So recently had a 10th. The year before that, he had a 13th, a 14th. So again, if you can remember this, uh, he looks like a great play for Bay Hill uh, and a great play for here, as far as I'm concerned. He played the Rocket Mortgage. That was first year, um, missed the cut. And I think that's it. I think that's from the comparable side. So yeah, uh, Charlie Hoffman at that range at 9,000. You know, I'm going to go with over these guys. Uh, Streelman, you know. I, I can't fault uh, for not playing him. He's had pretty decent course history. Also got a little pop in his bat. Um, you know, a lot of people, I just never think of Kevin Streelman, but he can stroke it off the tee. So we look at Seamus Power, right? I mean, he's ranked 41st on ball striking. The birdies don't look too bad, of course, right? He got his first one on tour, uh, and it's an altered tournament, but the Barbasol, but hey, still has a win on tour now. You can see, you know, it was in great form. It's teetered a little bit, but again, you got to remember that's better competition right at the Northern Trust. Um, you're playing the best, what, 125 players. Um, he has played here. He's got a good history. I mean, he missed cut in 2020, but other than that, you know, we'll say top 20 to top 30. And we go click on Seamus, uh, see why else we like him. You see good putter on Bermuda, uh, but also a good ball striker. So that's a nice combination. Um, you can see the ball striking faltered a little bit at the Northern Trust, but other than that, even before that, he was pretty much clicking Let's go look at some of his. So the Valero, not too much right home about, but that was, you know, a couple years back. Uh, that's not recent. Uh, and really his, you know, kind of newfound, uh, you know, swing, if you want to put it that way, or his success has been within the last, you know, I don't know, six months. Uh, so nothing to write home about the Houston. We can go look at the Fortinet, which was recently, but he did not play in the recent one. That was back in 2020. What about Valspar? Way back in 2017, he had a 27th. But again, you know, I, I'm kind of I know what he's doing right now, and just hope it's not a uh, a one-off. Never played the API and the Rocket Mortgage recently. He had an eighth, a 12th before that. So a good, I think a good comparable course. I think I ranked it probably my third favorite comparable course. Uh, Valero still being the number one, but I'm on Sheamus. That's where I'm going to lean at this 8,800 price tag. Um, the next guy, Emiliano Grillo, and there's, you know, this was kind of a tough one for me um, because, as you see, he has not been in good recent form. Not been playing since the Open, really, has not done what typically Grillo does. You can see he's had, you know, decent, I give that like a B, B minus uh, tournament past history here. But what I'm going with that this just is, suits so well for a, for a Grillo in it, right? He won his, well, what was he in? I don't think it was that Silverado. It was first tournament was the Safeway or whatever it was called at that time. 
Uh, might have been the fries.com or who knows. But I think it is, a you know, that kind of course still uh, is a good fit. Of course, the putter is atrocious, uh, but can get super hot. So his last, he had this run, right? So back, uh, this has been back in the May time frame where he, you know, showed up. Uh, he put uh, four out of five positive putting rounds. And we all kind of, you know, as you do, he's like, oh, here he goes. You know, he's going to put the ball striking with the putting again. And then it just fell apart. Um, let's go look at some of his comparables. So he's actually never played the Valero, played the Valspar recently and missed the cut, uh, missed cut in 2015. So nothing good there. Houston open. That was a little while ago, but you know, I missed the cut. I'm really gonna make a real great case for, uh, for Mr. Grio here. So of course I mentioned, let's just see, I gotta see what course it was actually at. So it is, it was saying Silverado. I, for some odd reason, felt like it was not Silverado. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was on a different track and it wasn't actually called the Safeway at that time. But maybe I am incorrect. Anyways, uh, so he's had good showing at Silverado, uh, even though he miscut, of course, recently. So there you go. Um, the 3M, he had a third and then a miscut. That's all about Grio. And that's pretty much the sum of it. Good showings uh, every time he's played Arnold Palmer. And then the Rocket Mortgage, a 39th miscut. So what I was getting to out of this whole thing is that. When he is on, the guy can just light it up. Put, you know, I've seen where he's put six birdies in a row. Um, you know, the price tag is going to keep some people off him, but I'm willing to take that risk because I know if he pops, uh, it's it's a top ten uh, at this course. So that's it, and you're going to have to make your kind of own call at that. Uh, Carlos Ortiz, which we haven't seen a lot of, uh, like the last time I've seen Carlos Ortiz. Well, you know, funny enough, I guess he did play at the FedEx, which I just saw like no coverage of him um i was gonna say little i think it was almost the olympics but maybe i'm wrong with that um but he's had an amazing you know course history here a t4 t3 also the reason why i think of carlos right off the bat is because he is i think his first one was the houston open uh pretty sure on that but let's go look well here he's also a good putter um comparative from a ball you know just he's not a pure ball striker the guy can putt you can see he's kind of neutral on Bermuda, poses is best. Uh, you can see the putter, and I, I literally say that and then come out and then he's, you know, losing 10 strokes with the putter. That's not typical Carlos Ortiz. I mean, you can see if we go back to, uh, I don't know, early summer, spring, you know, he put together, I don't know what that is, but about eight out of 10 positive rounds. Um, but, it, you know, it can go a little sideways. And also, you know, spending, uh, you know, eight to 9,000 on Carlos Ortiz to be been playing for a while. Used to be a day where you could get him for 6,000. He was kind of not even a thought, but uh, he has definitely moved up in those kind of projections. So go look at the Valero. Two missed cuts, but he did have a 15th way back in 2015. So not much you could do with that. Of course, I already mentioned the Houston Open. And these are, I believe, are on two separate courses. So this should be the CC of Houston, and this is Memorial Park. So figure that, but I mean, this one's the one I think is even a better comparable course, but uh, I like that. One of the reasons why I thought of him, of course, the Safeway, the Fortinet, you know, he's made the cuts, but nothing worth writing home about. The Valspar, two out of three made, uh, but miscut back in 2019, the most recent we have. Arnold Palmer, a couple 20s, and then a miscut in 2020. What about the Rocket? He's played there the first year and had a 55th. And I don't know if I did the 3M. 3M open. This is back in 2008 by that fifth. So that's a good. I think that was all the comparable. Play. I like I like Carlos Ortiz. Um, again, 8600. But I guess what I'm looking at, if I'm, I'd rather pay 8600 for a Carlos Ortiz than probably the even see Wu. They're not too different. Um, so I think it's not a terrible price or value. I'll tell you off the bat. I did have Matthew Wolf selected. Um, and it's probably a lot of the bias because I know what kind of talent and how this guy can go off. But at the last moment, I made a switch. Uh, I'm going to get us a little more value. And I think a guy that's probably playing better golf than now. Now, when I, if his driver's on, the guy's a great ball striker. And he's actually a pretty good putter. Um, I'll click and kind of show you that. So over the history of his career, you can see, you know, gains a stroke, over a stroke uh, on bent. Gains almost a stroke on Bermuda, gains over a stroke on Poa. So the guy's a solid putter. Um, but you can see over his last five events, that's kind of went away a little bit. 
it's just that if you take the last four events that we saw, so right, his first uh I'm trying to think of the first tournament he came back, I believe was the US Open. And came out and shocked the world. Because I remember, yeah, you can see so he had this break between February to June. And I actually picked him. Um, I just thought that the course, everything was gonna set up. It was a, you know, and it's a US Open. I I don't remember, but I think he was leading uh the opening day of the US Open. Doesn't matter. So that was like this huge bright spot and it really hasn't done anything since the wgc st jude uh, of course you know he won his first term at the 3m open um but let's go look and that was part of it i mean it was uh, i'm gonna do some showing of him because like i said he was on my top 15 i'm going to play him uh probably definitely in showdown but i'm not he's not gonna make my core 15 for you guys so i don't know why but for some reason so the 3m open of course uh, as i mentioned the chip in for Eagle to win that tournament against that was against Morikawa and DeChambeau. Uh, he had a 12th and then recently a 39th. So you can see kind of trending in the wrong direction there. Arnold Palmer played there once at a 52nd. The Rocket Mortgage, right? That was also the loss to Bryson DeChambeau, had a second. So, like I said, he was in my top 15. He just got pushed out by one guy, uh, which I'll tell you about. But I wanted to give you that analysis because I think he's a solid play. Keep an eye. We'll, we'll see where his projected ownership comes in. That price tag, if he was below $8,000, uh, i would be all over it. it. But, I mean, really, you could look at both these guys, Gary Woodland and him. Very similar, right? I mean, if they go off, they're going to be really good. And Gary has actually never played this tournament. Either is Matthew Wolf, so that's kind of interesting. But um, kind of, you know, the same thing, where we know they have excellence. It's just been in a doldrum for the past year. And of course, Gary had injuries. Matthew Wolf, you know, did have like a hand injury, but it was almost more mental. Um, so anyways, I'm going to go to Aaron Wise. He's not the guy actually that I shopped out for Matthew Wolf. I'll tell you who that is when I get to him. But Aaron Wise, I mean, just pure fit with like the Corey Connors, all those guys. Amazing ball striker. He actually had a little surge with a putter earlier this year, then it went away very quickly. Uh, but you can see right here, just, you know, lit up green. And you're going to notice putting is not in this mini model. Typically I do, but again, I just I just feel like this is a tournament that you can get away with not being the best putter. I'd rather see these, the par fives, who's gaining the strokes there, who's getting the birdie or better uh, as a whole. And then, of course, for the last 12. Um, recent results, Aaron Wise, you know, making the cut uh, and trending in the right way. Has played here before, four times. Again, top 25, a T17, a T39, a missed cut a long time ago. Um I think he's a great play, uh, again, because if he pops, he can win this tournament, and he's due. I mean, his only win, let me see here, why is that not working, uh, was the Byron Nelson, uh, and that was pretty early on. Very, I don't know if that was actually his rookie, like, but that's pretty early on. And then you see you know, some kind of mixed success uh, throughout that. Let's go look at the comparables, see where he fits in. Sotomayor, Valero, the 44th, uh, recently a missed cut before that about the houston open so that would be a memorial park but still you know it's an 11th i think it's you know pretty good representation not a fan at silverado um so no good there what about val spar he had a 68 uh the 3m open miscut played it once back in 2020 what about arnold palmer two out of three ain't bad i guess so a couple 40ths and then the Rocket, uh, he had a 35th and a miscut. Oh, I guess you do it that way. Um, yeah, but again, you know, if this is a course that I think suits for just like a Keegan Bradley to just go off, or even Corey Connors. I don't, honestly, there's not, well, I shouldn't say that. Corey Connors is a more elite approach uh, and I'm probably a little better off the tee. So he's a better ball striker, but um, he's a cheap Corey Connors. How about that? Um, I broke back guy I was looking at for a bit and uh, just couldn't do it. Just not good enough uh, here. If he gets hot with the putter, that's what, you know, that's his his great weapon. Uh, when he's hot with the putter, he's going to show up. CT Pan, you can see, uh, you know, really good up there in the ball striking. But uh, I'm going to pass on that one. And, you know, Doug Gim, good ball striker, but, you know, just form. And then I think his approach, what threw me off or threw me for a bit of a loop yeah, was this. His last four rounds, his irons have not been where typically Doug Gim is. So I'm out on Doug Gim, but I am, and you can see my number one ranked guy is actually 
at 7,900 is Joseph Bramlett, who I was on last well, at the Fortinet. Um, you know, coming off uh, a recent win on the Corn Ferry. You know, nothing great at the Safeway Fortinet. Um, but uh, you can see the guy, you know, is making birdies. Of course, some of this data that you're looking at is Corn Ferry, so don't let that fool you. Um, but uh, I like him. I know what he can do. I know what kind of player he is. Uh, just cranks it off the tee pretty accurate. You see, it's the putter. So it's, you know, fitting that same kind of mold. Uh, if that putter is that bad, then we're in a problem. But um, let's just see if I click on this real quick here. Byron Nelson, he played at a seventh. I'm just looking at PGA tournaments. To, I'm not going to count the Puerto Rico. The Barbasol recently, that was in July at an 11th. Uh, the Greenbrier Farmer. So when he's had his opportunities on the PGA Tour, he's he's done pretty well. I mean, I know it's, this is picking up the best of them. The Palmetto not too long ago. There's the Valero he played. He had a 34th. Uh, the Fortinet, the 35th. Fortinet again. Because he did have his card and then lost. Let me just see. Uh, it's going to be some older stuff. Yeah, I mean, going back to 2011. That's a long time ago. Just want to take a quick run through the, the courses to see if anything pops out that I did not notice. Valspar recently, that was in May, had a 63rd. There we look at Arnold Palmer, did not play there. The Rocket, that's kind of crazy, a couple of miscuts there. 3M Open recently had a 65th. So, yeah, I like him for this course. Again, he's fitting the mold of guy that I'm looking for. And, again, it's just you need a hot putter. All right, I'm going to start skipping through some of these guys because uh, it's getting a little long. So, Killer Keith uh, could be a good play here. You know, Ches Revy pops at 13th, but just not the, you know, funny enough, it just, what's he have here? I mean, okay, tournament history, just doesn't, not the guy I'm thinking about that I want. I want some more distance off the tee, but, you know, pretty, as you see, solid ball striker. Uh, it's also the putter with him. Scott Stallings is actually the guy that I swapped out Matthew Wolf for. So, saved a little bit of money, $7,700. You know, he's got these couple miscuts, but, um, you know, you can see he's had a really good tournament history here. Go click on Scott, and let's just go see what's up with him. So, you know, gains on Poa, you know, not a terrible putter, but not the best. He loses a tiny bit. Um, we see, you know, he had this kind of nice showing ball striking uh, at these few rounds, you know, started to hit really click with the putter. So, you know, he popped up because he gained almost seven strokes of the putter, but he also gained on the ball striking aspect. So that's what I like to see. Let's go see where he fits in for my uh, comp courses. So it's good showing at the Valero, I'd say, you know, over his total career. Recently, it was a 59, so that's not awesome. Um, but overall, pretty good. Houston Open missed cut a couple times, so that's nothing to write home about. The Fortinet, uh, I mentioned the putter, the putter popped, and he had a 21st way back, but a bunch of missed cuts sprinkled in between that. The Valspar, he had a 29th recently, a 9th in 2019. So we'll, we'll say, you know, that's that's a positive. What about the 3M Open? Made the cut every time, but nothing awesome. Arnold Palmer, he had a 40th in 2019 with some missed cuts before that. And what about the Rocket? 25th, so, you know, he's trending in the right way at the old Detroit Golf Club. So, okay, but yeah, I like him. I like, you know, I'm going a little bit on recent form. You can see the approach uh, is a little off. But, uh, you know, I can't be picking all the guys in the eight, 9,000. I'm trying to get you guys, I think, some good plays down here in the sevens. Cage Lee, I, you know, was a perfect thought. You know, he's actually been in pretty, really good form. Um, you know, pulled out at the BMW, a T12 out of, uh, what's that, best 70 guys? I think that's what they cut it down. I'm forgetting now from the FedEx. Even though it wasn't that long ago, it feels like it's forever ago. Uh, of course, my one of my uh, comp courses, 3M Open, he's done well. I'd say a mixed review, you know, two, two made cuts and, you know, top T35 and T46. I mean, nothing that would just be like, oh, smash. But again, I like where he was ranking in my model over the last 12 rounds. Uh, occasionally, I mean, yeah, the guy, so what did he win? The Byron Nelson, right? That was just recent. Yeah. You know, he just went in Fuego, T to green. I mean, look at that, gained eight strokes. And then, but, you know, it was the putter. The putter popped and then, you know, that's all he needed in the same same is going to go here. Just need a great ball striker, and we need a putter just to get hot for, for a few days. All right, so you see the Valero. Part of the reason why, great showings there. 
Uh, the Houston, he had one time missed cut. What about the Safeway or the Fortnet? A bunch of missed cuts. That's not positive. What about the Valspar? Played once recently this year at a 29, so that's good. The 3M at a 6, a 66, and a missed cut, but that 6 is good deal. What about Arnold Palmer? Missed cut recently and then made a cut before that, but nothing to. Then the Rocket Mortgage played it three times, uh, only made a cut there once. So kind of a mixed bag on, you know, with that. But again, I think he's an elite ball striker. As you see out of this whole field, he's ranked seven again over the last 12 rounds. I'm always going to keep stating that. So you're not like, well, wait a minute. He's not, you know, uh, over the 2021 season, he was not, you know, uh, I don't I don't care what they did back in February to some degree. I, I need to know what they're doing right now. Uh, McKenzie Hughes, no, thank you. Luke List, this is one of my picks that literally is just, I know Luke List. And I really don't care what any of this information tells me. I, I'll be straight up with you. Um, there's certain guys that I know that if, if they show up and things are feeling right, they could easily top 10, but could win this thing. And I think Luke List is a perfect fit for that. You can see, I mean, look at the variety uh, or the variance. Uh, a cut, T28, a T2, cut, cut. Um, you know, his career, you know, from the Barbasol T5 to a missed cut to a T51, that's that's Luke List, but he is an elite ball striker. He's got length off the tee. It's just been the putter. Um, and, you know, you can see over his 181 events that he's played, he is positive against the field in everything but the putter. And you can see when the putter does just get, you know, look at this, like it's neutral and he's a, a fourth at John Deere. Uh, because that's how elite he could be. Wells Fargo, um, you know, he gained a couple strokes, almost three strokes. He ended up with a six. Uh, the Valero recently, uh, well, one of my comparable, not recently, I was in spring. Uh, he had a 17th because of putter. So, you know, there's a rarity, okay? At, you know, you could say, well, there's the players. Uh, he gained, but, you know, missed. I mean, that's a rarity for him. Typically, you know, again, you, it's just, he is solid. Tita Green is just, can he get a neutral or just gain a little with the putter. And if he does, um, away he goes. So I can plug in and, uh, while we're here. I guess we can. Let's just see what he's done. All right, the Valero had a 17th. We already looked at that recently, but I had discussed before that. Uh, the Houston Open, missed cut in the 28th. Um, the Fortinet, he, you know, I don't know. I'd say it's pretty solid. He had a fourth would be his best at Silverado. But he's made the cut there quite a bit. The Valspar... You know, a 16th from a miscut. That's just, that's Luke List's career. Uh, what about Arnold Palmer? He's at a 7th, a 10th, and then a 63rd and a 17th. So, and then the Rocket, a 21st. Uh, that was not recently, but in 2020, and then a miscut. So that's what you're going to get with Luke List. It's not too far off from a Siwoo Kim, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, let's see, anybody else that I've got down here? Oh, Bronson Borgoon. Not sure if I've ever picked Bronson Burgoon, but um, I was looking, doing some due diligence, and he's been playing really good golf uh, recently. Uh, he's, you know, elite ball striker. He does everything I like. It's off the tee that can I sh that's what, so I guess I should rephrase that. Ball striking solid. Off the tee can get a little ugly. And then you see, you know, quite a mix. He's had a T6, a cut, a withdraw, a T20. Um, the model likes him. Let's see, we, you know, he's ranked 14th in the model. Uh, gains on bent a hair, but overall the putter's nothing. That is definitely not a weapon of his, as you can see over here by Better Illustrated. You can see the irons have been firing, uh, and off the tee has been, you know, let's say four out of six tournaments. He's been solid. Uh, it's the putter. So again, need the putter to pop. Uh, let's go see some of his comparables. So not so hot at the Valero. Uh, it, Made one cut out of three attempts. The Houston, a missed cut in a 13th, but that it is at the Country Club of Houston, the 2019. So I do like that. But again, you know, that's not recent. Good showing at the Fortnite recently at a 16th. Uh, Valspar, he had a 13th in May. So that's good. 3M Open, missed cut recently, but, you know, made the cut a couple other times in that. Arnold Palmer played it once and he missed cut. How about the rocket? That seems like his cup of tea. A couple of missed cuts and a 35th. So, anyways, I'm on Br I'm on Bronson. I almost said Bryson. I'm on Bronson Borgoon. Um, you know, projected ownership. I, I like that. 
And uh, yeah, I like him at 73. And I think my last, I just want to confirm. Yeah, last pick it would be Hendrick Norlander. Um, again, fits the mold, man. Just he's a he's a good ball striker. Just could be a horrendous putter. You see, you know, he, he got along this track pretty well at a T four last year. Played it four times, made the cut three out of the four. This best showing was a T four. Um, pretty decent recent, you know, form. You know, that missed cut at the Northern, but again, tougher field, easy track. I mean. As far as I'm concerned, you know, you should not be missing a cut, but I, you know, we went and looked at that. Well, let's go look at it. I'm just curious what he shot there. Cause I think if I remember right, you could literally have shot like three or four under and still miss the cut. Let me take a gander. What, uh, what did he shoot? And we'll type in Norlander. Well, actually nothing that great. Shot a 70 to 75. So I was just curious if it was something like he shot a 67 and then you know, shot a 73 or 74 and missed a cut. Uh, I'm not a huge Henrik Norlander guy. I just know what his game is. And he is usually, as you see, very elite uh, ball striking. It's around the green, which I'm not worried about here at all. It's the putter that typically holds him back. Um, I mean, you can see the Barbasol, a, a fifth, again, just gained a little with the putter. John Deere, you know. He didn't do that well with his irons, but gained with the putter and had a 28th uh, around the green. Let him down a little bit, the Rocket Mortgage. Let me just go this way. Where's he had his best showings? So, so the Farmers, so Sanderson Farms, he had a fourth. I already talked about that. Uh, just see if there's anything that pops out. The Rocket Mortgage, he had a 12th. That is one of the comparable courses. 3M, he had a 23rd uh, back in 2020. Again at the Rocket. Sanderson Farms. All right. So nothing, you know, I'm not going to go through all there, but I, I like him. I mean, he just fits the mold. Um, so 7,200, I'm in. And so that's my kind of top, you know, plays, top 15 plays. Of course, I, I mentioned there's a ton of good plays in the 7,000 range. So I'll have those out tomorrow for you. I'll kind of got to go through and narrow them out. But, I, you know, I saw like 10 guys that I, I'm interested in playing. So, again, stars and scrubs, that's what I see this week. And a lot of opportunities from a betting side. So, with that said, let's go talk about my favorite. Well, we'll go summarize the picks, talk about my favorite bets. Okay, so to summarize, who is my – this is my top five, my fab five picks. So, it, last week I picked uh, – well, for the Fortnite, I picked first, second, and third. That was – I don't know if I'm going to be able to top that. I actually picked first, second, third, 11th. And then Webb Simpson let me down. I uh, had a terrible Sunday. I think he ended up like in 30th or something like that. So I doubt I'll be able to top that. But let's just see. This is who I'm going with. I've already mentioned a thousand times, Corey Connors is my favorite guy. Uh, I think he's 16-1, to 1, but I'm betting him, even though I'm not happy about the odds. But I, I don't know why. Everything just tells me uh, Corey Connors. Uh, and it probably go total sideways. But I, I think he's the guy that's going to pull this one out. Also, right there, option B, I already mentioned, Will Z. Um same thing, get his first win on tour. This fits uh, perfect for him. Mito, so my top three guys, I, I you know, Mito I, I picked last week too. I think he ended up in third after all said and done. Um, that's my top three. Now, of course, you got to be able to sprinkle in some other guys. So Carlos Ortiz would be the next guy. And then, you know, he's in uh, Bramlett's in the 7,000 range, I think 7,800. Um, but that would be like, you know, I think, I haven't tried it, but that, that'd be like my starting five and then sprinkle in a very low guy if possible. So my next five, uh, I got the Hofster. Just need him to show up. Uh, we got uh, Aaron Wise. Uh, of course, Elite T to Green. Just need the putter. Same with Grio, Elite T to Green. Scott Stallings has been showing pretty good form. He's got some pop off the bat. It's, of course, going to come down the putter with him. And then, of course, Norlander. As I mentioned, um, you know, good good player T to Green. It's just the putter also. And that's pretty much the summation of all these picks. Seamus Power, a little better putter, and, uh, you know, his form started wayward. You know, he was just top 10 in every time, had the win uh, recently, but uh, I think his last two tournaments wasn't as great, but I, I still like Seamus. And I feel like the value for him is pretty good. Um, you got Swafford, which, you know, I think a lot of people are going to jump off that train. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we went through Hudson Swafford. Um, but anyway, either way, we didn't. Of course, he was impeccable ball strike. I think he ranked in top 10 in my model. Uh, but, you know, again, it's the putter. Of course, he has one on tour. Um, so, yeah, I like Hudson. Luke List, the model says no. I say yes because I know the putter goes. 
uh, occasionally, you know, again, elite just won not too long ago at the Byron Nelson. And uh, the guy, you know, Tita Green is great. It's, you know, what is he going to do with the putter? And last but not least, first time on the show, I am picking Bronson Borgoon. Uh, a lot of his recent form and just kind of seeing what's going on with him. I think he could do very well at this course. All right. And now to my three favorite bets. And I already gave you my early faves so you could get them in before the odds start to change, which I did notice some did go down a little bit. Um, you know, I got to stick with my man Munoz, even though... I seen his worst golf ever last, you know, a couple weeks ago. I think that's a one-off. I've never seen him shoot eight over, eight over consistently. Uh, of course, he's won here. No reason why he can't do what he does in the first round and go out and lead or tie for the lead. I mean, you still get, you know, the money split if he ends up tying a couple guys or one guy. Uh, so I like him 50 to one. It's not my favorite. I would like a little higher odds, but it is not the biggest tournament, not the strongest field. So I will put some shackles on that. I also like, uh, you know, Bramlett to uh, 65 to one, I think for everything he's offering, um, he's probably the best odds. So, uh, you know, I'm looking at the value of the odds to where I really do think he could win this tournament. And then uh, if you want a long shot, someone we can talk about, uh, he's in the price in the 6,000 range. You got Wyndham Clark at 180 to one. Uh, I did bet this. And if you don't know much about Wyndham Clark, uh, I always kind of lumped him in with a Luke list to a degree. Now, let me clarify. Uh, he's got crazy length off the tee, and he's actually a good putter. It's everything in between that that kind of falls apart. So if his irons go, um, you will see Wyndham Wind Clark uh, definitely up there at the top of the leaderboard. I don't know what his top 10 is. Uh, I would guess you're getting like 25 to 1 or something like that. So that would be another way. He definitely could top 10. But the last time Wyndham Clark showed up, I believe it was the Bermuda where he had a chance to win. And then since then, he hasn't done a whole lot. So this just kind of feels like a Wyndham Clark possibility. Um, he did have a pretty decent show at the Fortinet. I, I, I saw him pop up uh, on the, a showdown round or two. So, you know, just someone on I'm going to bet, and that's my long shot that I, I, I like. All right, that's it. Wrap this thing up. And, uh, hey, thanks. If you stay with me this whole time to listen to all this, uh, at least click that like button. So you, if you stayed this long, you must have liked it. Share with anybody else. And uh, again, uh, I've, the subscribe base is slowly trickling, trickling. Uh, I thank you all new subscribers. I just got about five or six yesterday and we're getting there. I need like 75 more. So you could be the last 75 to give me that 1000 mark. Be mucho appreciation for that. And if I can help you anyway, hit me up on YouTube comments. I do check those all the time. Or, uh, you know, follow me on Twitter. Purely follow me on Twitter. It's, I don't do a ton on there. I'm not going to wow you and entertain you. What I'm going to do is I keep an eye on PGA Tour communications, everything that I have access to. Uh, and if I see anything, like if someone's withdrawing or not feeling well or whatever it is, it's more about making sure you guys have the lineups uh, that are starting. If I, you know, but hey, if somehow they pull out like immediately before, I, I'm not going to get that information as nobody else is. So, all right. Good luck to us. I will talk to you guys tomorrow when I will have my value plays, ownership projections. We're going to look at weather. I will have my prize picks out for this tournament for Thursday. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. All right, guys. Take care and uh, talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>